Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Absolutely. My name is Benny, that is Sal, and that is Hudson. And today we're going to be talking about everyone's favorite topic of discussion, casting decisions in movies. <laughs> Woo! Yay! So, I'll give you the rundown as to what's going on. We already had the big argument about the casting of the ca main cast of the Fantastic Four, and we dealt with that one. But now the rumors have been confirmed true. A woman has been cast as Shala Ball, which is a female Silver Surfer that popped up in a multiversal story for maybe a couple of pages. That is who they are putting into the story. As it has apparently been told, the reason they are doing this is to prove to the audience that this is not the traditional Marvel universe. And that way you will know by seeing a female Silver Surfer that this is an alternate reality. That's the, that's the supposed reasoning behind it. Oh man, I didn't catch on to that when Spider-Man became Iron Man Jr. <laughs> or when <laughs> any number or when uh the original Ant-Man ended up being 30 years older. <laughs> yeah. Like so okay, cuz the whole the whole pitch of like the Fantastic 4 that we're getting are going to be from another reality. Yes. Wait, what? But so yeah, that's the idea. Look, that, like, here's I the misunderstood. Here, here's, here's does not exist in the main MCU. Right. That we're gonna get, we're gonna get an established Fantastic Four family who is willing to come over to our yes. Universe. That they that's like, how they're gonna do it. We're gonna start our new Fantastic Four franchise in a completely separate reality, and then they're going to leave that reality and come to our reality. Right. So it won't be confusing and stupid in any way. <laughs> it it will be very straightforward. Where they're gonna take place in another reality, I guess where they save the world or something because they saw a bunch of like art and stuff of like a utopia or at the very least of advanced technology and stuff. My guess is, you know, it's like a, it presupposes the pitch. This is just a pitch that like the Fantastic Four in a reality where they were the only heroes, not unlike every other superhero movie franchise pre MCU, and they were like, oh, if we actually just followed the logical you know, conclusion, they would save everything. You know, if Reed right. Richards existed with no Thanos, he'd probably just revolutionize all technology and we'd all be living in a utopia. And it's like, then it all collapses or they get eaten by Galactus or an incursion happens and they have to come over here. And now they're they're like, but this place is imperfect. It's a great job for the Fantastic Four. Fart, I don't know, whatever. The reason we people are upset is because Julia Garner is Shia LaBelle, who is canon, Norrin Rad's greatest love, He's the reason, she's the reason that Norrin Rad makes the decision to become the Silver Surfer in the first place. I like Shia LaBelle as a character. I think that's a really cool concept, especially if you read Silver Surfer 50. But the question is, what are you doing? Because they're not just, they're not being straightforward with this completely off kilter concept. They're right. like, ladies and gentlemen, Silver Surfer, a woman. Okay, so that's the actual, that's if you, the if, problem. If no one has seen my video, like, I don't know if either one of you watched my problem with video on it. No, I'm sorry. That is literally what I said is the issue. That what I'm getting sick and tired of is the, uh, it, like, first off, I don't, why are we doing this? Can we do it? Yes. Will it sure. work? Sure. We, like, there's no reason that Norm Rad has to have a penis. He can easily be a woman. Well, I mean, but there's there, an argument can be made that Norman Rad does not have a penis because I don't know if you've seen him lately. <laughs> He's like a Ken doll. Okay, but what I have, but, but problem number one on the swapping. This is, in my opinion, the equivalent of swapping like Spider-Man. Yeah. Because Silver Surfer is one of the most iconic Marvel characters that does pop up. They always do, you know, here's Spider-Man, here's Iron Man, here's Captain America. And when they start to go to the outliers, right. it's like, here's Wolverine, here's Daredevil, here's Silver Surfer. Because right. he's Silver recognizable. Surfer is a, yeah. At the very least, you could say Silver Surfer is a, is a long-established Marvel hero with their own multiple series right. who... Like has a, has an established canon that would be that could be altered with if you were to recast as a woman. I, I suppose that could be an argument that could be made. But the bigger issue, and this is where I think your your like your opinion is going to really matter on this, Hassan. Right. I'm tired of this being the marketing for everything now. Yeah. yeah. I'm tired of the marketing for the MCU being like we cast a woman, and then they're like. That's it. You get nothing. You get yes. no plot. You get no synopsis. You get no it idea what we're doing. It is genuinely we're infuriating. And I'm really confused as to, you know, a regular studio or movie franchise, like making a movie and it being kind of a dud. It makes sense. They don't have a formula. They're not multi-billion dollars. They don't have checks and balances and hordes of people that have been so successful that are always willing to work again. Yeah. But the MCU does. So it baffles me when we hear in between Infinity War and Endgame, we're going to get a Black Widow movie. 
and it is a poorly written one that is thrown into the ether and everybody forgets. It yeah. baffles me when we're getting a Captain Marvel one movie that isn't very good that makes a billion dollars because of that outrage marketing yeah. and because of the hype of everything else happening around it. Hey, this is taking place. She's going to be an endgame. This is important. And we don't make it a good movie. I don't mind. I, I couldn't care less if you bring female characters into prominence. That's cool. That's probably a good idea that makes yeah. the world more real. But the they keep writing them like trash. They keep yeah. making these horrible projects around around them. So now I'm I'm worried about Fantastic Four because again but the problem is this because they're doing that swap right. What, yeah, right. In, like okay, cool. You can gender swap. This can totally. work. That's fine. But every experience that you have done up to this point has been terrible. <laughs> like yes, it's like yeah. And that's you're you're hitting you're hitting on multiple points, Benny, which is great because yes, Disney is not handling female-led properties well when no. it comes to Marvel. It took Cap it took Wonder Woman doing well for them to even make a female-led project. Right. Then their other plan is gender swap characters that whoa, people won't be upset the taskmaster swapped. What is wrong with you? Didn't Nobody, even, <laughs> like I mean, and here's the thing, what if Taskmaster has a gender swap? Okay? Doesn't matter. Are they still really cool? Are they Taskmaster? No, no. they're they're like a weird cyborg that, kind of thing. That's that's my yeah, biggest what? issue. It's it's like they are doing it on purpose. It's like they are setting up these female characters or these actors to fail. And I'm not saying that they are that they have failed. Well, that, Who that, that's that's butter back in the building. Who right. It's like he's doing it to building. prove that it's not going to work because because a female Taskmaster on its own, I I genuinely have no problem with that. It's when you go. Well, it's not really Taskmaster. I'm just putting a, a character that we invented from whole cloth into a Taskmaster costume. Yeah. That you're like, well, you didn't do. Then why bother? And and by the way, I'm saying why bother? Do it at all. Not why bother? What like gender swapping? With Julia Garner's case, they are my my main issue is you threw her to the wolves. You said, mm -hmm. hey, Julia Garner over there. She's the reason why Silver Surfer isn't a dude. Good luck. Well, and, that, and that's my argument on I mean, the video is like this is like what they did with the Star Wars stuff. Like the, every every female cast member of Star Wars yeah. has said that that was one of the most horrific experiences mm -hmm. of their life. Now I'm not right. even a fan of those sequel trilogies. I think they're terrible. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that you need to be shitty and nasty and terrible to these women. No. Nope. And then Marvel's doing the same shit where they're like, we're not going to tell you what's going on. We're not going to tell you the plot. We're not going to tell you the villains. We're not going to tell you yeah. what. We're literally just going to announce casting, and you need to get excited. Yeah, and it's like, dude, why it's, you've it's, you haven't done this right yet? Why do I have to get excited <laughs> for, when you're gonna do this swap? And I'm all well, and here's the other thing, too. They go as far, they go as far as to make those properties. So, like, Avatar just happened, and it's been really, really sad to see the kind of memes and horrible things people are saying about the girl they cast as Azula. She's a fine actor, but frankly, she did not fit the build for that character, and th there's nothing wrong with that, but. This fandom wanted their Azula realized in live action. They wanted yeah. their slender, cunning, evil figure, and they got a girl who who has a round face shape. She does. So the memes have been horrendous. Every I comment seen any section. Of them. Oh I my god! Seen any of the memes the, that I haven't even seen her. If you're no. in the Avatar: The Last Airbender fandom or even close to it, it has been the most upsetting thing. So there's in Avatar, they ride this flying bison named Appa. Um, and they say, Appa, yip, yip. No, we in the comments on all the Azula posts, they'll literally be like, Azula, yip, yip, because this girl is bigger. It's so fun. Betty, don't oh, laugh at oh, that. Oh, that is it's, it's low hanging fruit. It's low, low hanging fruit. It, it is low hanging fruit. You're I chuckled the first time I read it. I chuckled the first time I laughed. You don't have to agree with it. But there's no. a reason why comedians make a career of low hanging fruit. No, it's fair. It's fair. I <laughs> chuckled the first time I heard it. But I, it's like, it's so unfair to the actress because she came to a casting call. She worked really hard. She right. got a role that she probably deserves. But as a casting director, why are we not casting characters uh, when we have a pre-established description? Why are we not meeting that description? Yeah. Like why are like sometimes creative liberty? Sometimes you can improve things. Shang Chi, we didn't need the crazy racism that is the original Shang Chi designs and those storylines. Play with it, and we did a good job. Simu looked cool enough, I think. Eh, could do some yeah. improvement. But Shang Chi didn't go far enough, I think. I, I not not, go not in enough. race. I just meant like. <laughs> I would have rather seen like an actual like crouching tiger, hidden dragon in like in like Harlem movie. Right. Yeah, like that would have been really but cool. To bring this back, please. The issue, uh, the overall issue, I think, with this decision is, I think we're in a day and age where we need to swap our marketing. Yeah. Because announcing casting, no one gives a shit about anymore. 
Right. We're, we're way past oh, people man. getting excited about the MCU bringing in someone on the level of Pedro Pascal. Oh, we don't care anymore. We I just care. saw like somebody being like, hey, Tom Hanks, why haven't you been in the MCU yet? And I'm like, that's like saying, yo, uh, Brian, how come you haven't come to my pool party yet? Like there's nothing, <laughs> th- that's not, there's nothing creative about that. That's about like yeah. being invited to the big party. Oh and, my God. And again, Bill Murray has proven it doesn't matter. Bill Murray's in the MCU. Can you remember his character's name? No, you can't. You can't because it doesn't matter. He would have been a great puppet master, but instead he's that guy in Quantumania. Hey, he slept with Michelle Pfeiffer. Yes. Can't forget but that. like what I'm Off getting camera. tired of, and I feel like this is a he part quantum of the dinner. The what? amount because I had this discussion at uh what was it? Um it was the last con I went to, WonderCon. Okay. Okay, mm. so there's a comic book company. We're walking by their booth, and their booth is at every convention. Okay. <laughs> yes. And I've seen them at every convention. And I'm not going to name the name of the book because I don't want to like throw shade in their way because of yeah. the way their marketing goes because that's where I'm going with this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know anything about their book, their staffing, their characters, anything. And the reason is, is it's one of the many emails I get. And I only recognize the name because the name stands out. But I get a lot of emails where the first, and this is not a joke, three paragraphs is about how diverse or inclusive and what who's involved in all this kinds of stuff. Yeah. They don't tell me about the story, about the characters, about what I would actually get excited for. Yeah. We're in a day and age where marketing tactics have turned into look at how bold we are. Yeah. And that's and it's gone congratulate on congratulate so, me. Yeah. Congratulate me. And it's gone on for so long now. I'm tired of it. Oh yeah, I'm tired of them coming out and being like, "We cast a female Silver Surfer." Get excited! I'm like, I'm not going to get excited. You're not going to make not me excited with that, igno- that announcement anymore. Yeah. It's not fair for the women. Like, also, like as a woman, you want your representation in, in media to be a Silver Surfer. Like, I, I no, that's well, that, that was what the guy said. I'm like, okay, cool. Phoebe, I get Captain Marvel. I get Wonder Woman. Totally. I, even, I even get you wanted to make a good villain in Taskmaster, and you yes. failed at that, but you at least attempted it. Yeah, but I don't think anyone, any woman is going to go, man, I really want to be the girl in the skin tight outfit, show it off every curve yeah. or there, or she's just going to be fully dressed up. And she will be CG. Be she will yeah, be CG. I, it is but crazy like, to imagine she's not CG. Yeah. And, and it's frustrating when you're in a position where it's like, if you know anything about this world or about this, like cache of characters, you know, that there's an alternative. Like, you know, oh, you want a female server server? Her name's Nova. She exists. Her character's name is Frankie. Like, you, you could just do that. But it's like, no, we're doing this, but. And it's always, there's always a but. One T. Like, it's always, it, you know what I mean? Like, we're, 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 we're it's like we're, we're hearkening back. And it, I, I almost blame the multiversal saga for this. Where it's like, yo, we're regressing. Like we're going back to like the the the, two, the early two thousands of superhero movies where it's like yeah yeah all right it's like the comic book you're right but don't forget how creative I am right. we wear black suits for our X Men because all of them look exactly the same kids. it's cheaper on the animators and it's easier on the costume designers okay uh-huh. all right well, like, well that's another thing that irritates me because like whenever we, we just need to go back to people that care about the properties like the yeah. Russo brothers with Winter Soldier where they cared mm-hmm. about the property because right. I do feel like we're also in a day and age where every time we make a superhero property or we make a video game property or we make right. anything around a property franchise it's half I want to do the property. And yeah. then the other half of, but look at how smart I am and how I was able to sub, yeah. you know, subvert your expectations. And Absolutely. I'm always just like, I'm, yeah. I don't, and I'm tired of you subverting my expectations. I don't <laughs> give a shit about you subverting my expectations. Yeah. What I want you to subvert is my expectation that you're going to make a good fucking movie. Yeah. I want now, you to just do the property, make me excited, then show me what else you can do. Exactly. That being said, I don't want to conflate the issue here. A female well, silver surfer is not the same thing as you are not making a good product. Yeah, not, but, no, it, it does not mean that Fantastic Four will suck. No, it's but emblematic. It, like the 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 approach to how they announced it is emblematic of the problems that people have, whether they have overtly or, or subtly understood or like subliminally understood, is an issue within the system of entertainment media today, which is that they are profoundly tone deaf and that they don't understand why a product works. Not to say a product's going to work or not going to work or not going to work because a female is being, because a woman is being cast as a male character. The movie can still be incredible. I'm not, I'm I'm sure she will. She's a good actor and I think it's going to be fine. My problem is with how they announced it 
in the wake of how negatively everything has been received overall, whether it's, you know, by the machine that is weaponized outrage or just the like the the meh response from the peanut gallery it's not responsible to say julia garner is going to be silver surfer you can you have to deal with it and then just leave that's what i said in my video my issue is that now the entire internet is filled with all the hate-filled vitriol that's going to come from that yeah it's only going to be too but here's the flip side the other side isn't defending her right the other side is exactly what you said where it's i guess i'm not gonna see it or I, yeah. know, like, or I'll, I'll I just it, don't care it, i'll see it or like i'm so tired of them going yes and instead of just doing the thing yeah or or it's just i, I nor under normal circumstances i would go see this movie i probably still will oh i will but i like, mean i gotta like, see no, what no, no, to me i'm saying like the yeah. but, like under normal circumstances the, those in opposition to the outrage are so exhausted and tired because a reasonable person doesn't argue and fight every day of the week. So like the outrage machine is self-sustaining. It's a perpetuating cycle of, of outrage. And, and so it seems like it's the same people always yelling at the same time. Well, it is the same people. It's well, always, yeah, it is exactly the same people. It's always but they the all same sleep. People. So they, it's, it's, a, it's a, it's an Ouroboros, but like they, they do people, this. People get into this echo chamber of, I need to be mad all the time. Right. And so they just look for yeah. something new to be mad about. And that's how we're in a day and age. Yeah. Because what happens is people decide that they're going to be mad about anything they disagree with. Right. Not not just perturbed, not annoyed, not I'm going to ignore it. They've decided that they're going to be mad about it. Yeah. And for some reason, that conflates to it's a political argument. I mean, right. I, I've, I've made two videos on Benny has a problem in which I basically say, that this is the latest. It's a political thing and it makes no sense. And those right. were about Sydney Sweetie's boobs. Why is this political? And the other one was about uh, a video game, Stellar Blade. Why is this political? Mm. And one comment was, Benny, you don't get it. Everything is political today. <laughs> and I'm like, no. You're making it political. Everything has become political because right. everyone's and, an and, idiot. And the thing is, it's like Sydney Sweeney's <laughs> boobs should not be a right and left argument when we still don't have proper infrastructure in Detroit. Right. You know, like like this this is this is my problem here. Like right, but people... it's easy to argue about. Like it's easy to point to wokeness in Hollywood and say the Silver Surfer being a woman issue is the hot. It, it is it represents all this thing. It only represents that Hollywood thinks they're very creative and they make these decisions or that they're really stupid and they don't know how to outline why. Like it's right. because it, it's like, well, he's a dude normally. What, like what, what is the decision behind it? This is and just I, a non-announcement. It's, it's a non-announcement. It's a non-announcement. You just have, this movie exists. Don't talk about it. If a surfer appears in a trailer, don't address it. I don't need casting announcements. I'm, I'm perpetually I'm done sick. with casting it out. I'm well, I mean, so sick of it. I don't care. It, like you hear like uh, movers and shakers in the industry or or veterans of the industry like Quentin Tarantino talking about how like the movie star is dead because Marvel killed it. Like people don't care about movie stars, they care about seeing their favorite character on screen. And I, I gotta agree with him on some level because when it comes to like it it it, it matters well, only insofar as like you know, like the Witcher. People are like, oh boy, the Witcher. But like, they did care that Henry Cavill's Witcher versus the Hemsworth as the Witcher, right? Yeah. Like that did yeah. matter. But it was more about getting the Witcher on screen than it was about getting Henry Cavill I, to be the Witcher. I think we're at a day and age where the character matters most. Right. And then we can get extra excited about certain people being cast. Yes. But the fact is, and this has been proven by Helmsworth, by Evans, by Robert Downey Jr., it, they... People, do, their movies post MCU are not doing that well. Well, they don't. They they they're not Marvel. They're, they're juggernauts. not bombing. They're not bombing. No, don't get me wrong. But they're also not making a whole other franchises. It's because it's, it's it, people like the actors. Yeah. But let me ask you this: Did anyone go see Robert Downey Jr.'s Doolittle? Because I sure shit did. No you one think? did. That movie it tanked hard. That's what I'm, but that's my point. Like, but yeah, I love it, Robert Downey Jr. That movie's being promoted like crazy in all of my apps right now. Exactly. And I was like, oh shit, I forgot he was in a movie called Doolittle. Well, and that, <laughs> he did that like, movie right after Endgame too. That well, was and, the thing he did immediately after. Exactly, because like that's that's the old Hollywood staple. Was like if a big actor or a new actor was in a big movie. Then now I've made a movie star. The MCU, the Marvel Studios model, does not make movie stars. The 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 Marvel Studios product. It's it's funny actually. The only thing that Marvel Studios makes is Marvel movies. 
Yeah. They don't make movie stars. They don't change the way we make movies. They did, but it doesn't work, right? Like, why didn't the Universal Monster movie work? You like the Marvel model. Yeah, for Marvel. Hell, half the DC audience is not interested in Marvel Studios one-to-one, -one, right? Yeah. Because, like, they have their own ways of expectations for how this works. The Marvel Studios formula works to make Marvel movies. It does not make movie stars. It does not make franchises. It and 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 even then, like it doesn't make franchises. Thor, you know, like it, it, theoretically, if you look at it as a Hollywood machine, all the characters in the Marvel universe are their own movie franchises. Yeah, yeah. but Marvel is the franchise, and it makes chapters within its installments. That's the reality of Marvel Studios, but. Hollywood doesn't understand that and audiences have it hasn't been around long enough to be permanent for the audience to understand the the, the lingo right like yeah. it used to be you'd cast Tom Cruise in a movie and it made this much money you know it makes it makes sense that like if 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 Robert Downey Jr is the highest paid actor in America that if I put Robert Downey Jr in a movie it makes the highest paid actor money but well, it doesn't because it's for, because he made that money from the Marvel formula which is a which is an outlier it's actually and funny to say people that, brought up Oppenheimer Right, and I, and I I still haven't seen Oppenheimer. I'm waiting for it to, to come out because it's so long. And I people know me. saw it. Yeah, but it but didn't make a billion dollars. I keep forgetting Robert Downey Jr. was even in it. Like, he's a, yeah. well, he's not the main character. He's, <laughs> he's, yeah, it's it's really really interesting because you know there are some stars. Star does not mean what it used to mean. Star right. used to mean no. asses and seats, no matter what. Now you're getting like you know. What's uh, up, brother? He's a star. Yeah, that guy's a star. <laughs> oh my god! Tuesday. The, uh, it, it reminds me of remember Tuesday. back in the day when the Godzilla movie came out and they promoted Brian Cranston was going to be in it only for yeah. him to die in the first fifteen minutes. People were pissed, <laughs> including me. <laughs> yeah, because I'll tell you this: I'm not there to see the guy playing from Kick Ass. I'm there <laughs> to see Brian Cranston with with Godzilla and Ken Watanabe, obviously. But like. Ken Watanabe is always great. Oh. Yeah, well, Chris Pratt, I mean, so so there's like Tom Holland and Chris Pratt. They both were much smaller actors pre-MCU. Yes. Chris Pratt, even smaller than Holland by like a crazy margin. He had his breakout role in Parks and Rec, and then two seasons in, he got um, he got Star-Lord, and then he got Jurassic World, and then he got all these other movies. Now he's Mario. Now he's all these other characters. Tom Garfield. Holland, same way. He yeah. was Onward. He did Uncharted. He's done all these other big movies. So... Those stars exist. I stand by my statement. I like that chart. Yeah, I didn't see well, it, but like neither did anybody else. Uh, yeah, charted yeah, horribly. Like, two, and second, two, two second thing. And then we'll go back to what I said. Yeah. The chart is not terrible, but it's not good. Yeah, it's, just, it's a middle of the road. Yeah, it's a popcorn. It looks flick, like ass. Assuming, I couldn't right? care less. But like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, Hassan. Hassan. No, I I think it's just like left on a note of yes, stars still exist, but they do not have the same kind of star power. I'd argue that Sydney Sweeney is a star right now. Every yeah. single thing that she she touches is getting a massive amount of press because of her breath. No, I'm just kidding. No, because of her acting skills. She's such a good job as an actress. You notice I that... mentioned you in the video about her boobs? My, I got a friend who was <laughs> just like... It's you. This, is my, this is my Graceland. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's just so funny. It, I think it's funny. We can talk about that another time. I like <laughs> making that joke because I think it's so hilarious because I told somebody this four years ago. During like Euphoria, during early City Sweden, she did you like did. a thing with Pete Davids Davidson, and I said, and I quote, "Those, those things are gonna blow up the internet at some point, and that'll be everything everybody talks about." It's exactly what happened. Yeah. Well, and she's um, a smart, she's a smart person. Like you heard her like kind of give away the store a little bit when she was talking about like, "Well, I did Madam Web because it was a strategic move. Now I'm friends with the people at Sony. I know them. I, I made can work anyone with them. but you through that. That's a cult classic. That's the biggest comedy rom com to come out in a long time. Dude, I, right? I saw that one. Anybody but you, and it was good. Like Natalie, Dude, was that really? I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. Low, I'm not joking. So, uh, this game came out called <laughs> AFK Journey. Is that yeah. on auto right now? And so Natalie and I, were, we were both like, I kind of want to play this game tonight, but it's an AFK idler, so there's gonna be a lot of downtime. Right. So we're like, what should we watch? And I'm like, well, this is a shitty rom com. We can just pop a rom com on that we don't have to pay attention to. And we both enjoyed it and paid attention. <laughs> like it was. <laughs> yeah. Well, it know. was good. It was good. Yeah, there's a con there's a greater conversation behind that. Like Zendaya is a big star right now too. Yeah. Like we don't even know her last name. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like really think about that. Oh, it's, it's not true. a star. Her name is Zendaya. That's yeah. it. End Wait, hold on. I, you dude. just didn't realize it. What is her last name? It's like Raquel right? or Rock something. I feel like. Okay, I assume Zendaya was like Coleman. I'm gonna bring Zendaya this Coleman. Back. I'm going to bring this back because we're oh, yeah. way off base, and I think the yeah, video is great fine. episode. <laughs> but the yeah. argument that we're making, and the entire point of this is, this could be a good movie. This, I'm, no, she, she I, could, I'm gonna go on record. It'll be a good movie. 
Yeah. That's true. It'll even, be cool. even even the MCU bombs. I've I have yet to walk out I've of an MCU them. movie and be like, F- this shit. I you know I, I have, have seen two. I of have them. I have two of those. I've well, I didn't go those. see those two. So <laughs> <laughs> this guy's the comic story in my. I, I, you guys remember? I didn't see Quantum Mania and. Uh... <laughs> did you see Love and Thunder? Oh, well, I did walk out of that one saying that. Okay, so I okay, did walk out of Love and Thunder. Thank you, yeah. thank you, thank you. What I'm saying yeah. is, well, more often than not, they're not bad. Okay, they've got more wins than failures. Yes. I stand by even the Marvels was a good movie. It was I like the Marvels. It wasn't incredible, but it wasn't as bad as everyone liked to make it out. Hell no. Um, but my point is, this will probably be a good movie. The casting choice will probably work if they give her enough lines and actually make her work with it. If they turn it into a taskmaster, it's going to be terrible and we're going to forget she even exists. The <laughs> point of this video is we're tired of these casting decisions being what's announced with no backstory, no explanation, no nothing. Building off that, when they announced the Fantastic Four casting, they did a gorgeous art piece that depicted the Fantastic Four in their iconic roles. Yeah. With Silver Surfer, they said, this is the woman who will be playing Silver Surfer, deal with it, goodbye. They didn't do any, there's no picture. If they had released an image of her as the Silver Surfer through art, and that was it. Honestly, I think people I, have been I, like, that was pretty freaking cool. I think in this day and age, at this point, don't even announce your casting until they've got costumes. And exactly. Then that be the first official. It, let rumors run rampant. Who the f*** cares? Stop giving these exclusives to Deadline.com where they get to announce casting with no context, no anything. It's just these people don't have any idea. Like when it comes to like websites, random websites that were started by one person who was like intrepid and actually knew how to buy URLs, like had a GoDaddy account was like, uh, comic books.com. Like, you know, (laughs) uh, got it. Ha ha. I guess I'll get a WordPress template and I've got a job now. Like they don't, they're not, they don't know how to make these kinds of announcements. Like they take a press release and they go like, uh, post the press release. Right. But when well, it comes to like, you got an you got an exclusive announcement, it's this person being silver. But like again, neither here nor there. I still say you should have released a cool art piece of her as Silver Server. I would have been like, that's cool. It would have caught. It would have been. And then people who are mad, who are professionally mad, would have been like, uh, I don't know about the rest of you, but I see some boobs on that picture. Yeah, I, I mean, but but that's what I'm saying. But what I'm tired of is this half-ass announcement shit. Like, announce yeah. more to it. And Make there's an also r- supposed rumors that it's going to be Shallow Ball, but Norrin Rad is still going to be there. Yeah. So say that. Well, and what does that mean? What does that mean? Yeah. You guys, do you guys remember when there weren't announcements and you'd go to a movie theater <laughs> and then <laughs> you get a trailer it? for a movie and yeah. you're like, oh my God, they're making you know this? One of my favorite what? things to do. They should do. Our, one of my favorite things to do in our downtime is I just grab any movie on Hulu and start it. <laughs> and I get 30 minutes in to decide if I like it or not. I don't mm. know if it's a drama, if it's a rom-com. One time, I think I was watching a porn, and I'm like, how the hell does it get on Hulu? Yeah. But my point is, I miss the days of going into these movies and not knowing what I'm watching and yeah. enjoying it and yeah. getting through it. I, I miss the days of just knowing the general idea. Here's the title. Here's the two-sentence two blurb, and I'm good to go. Yeah. yeah. And before I end more- this video... To end the other discussion that Hassan and I started midway through this, Zendaya's name is <laughs> Zendaya Coleman. Zendaya Coleman. <laughs> no, it's Zendaya Marie Stromer Coleman. So ah, now it makes wow. sense why she goes by Zendaya. <laughs> yeah, she has so many effing names. I mean, one's as good as the next. <laughs> on that Power note, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of Absolutely and our discussion on this topic. Let us know your thoughts down below. And in all honesty, if you're just going to be filled with vitriol and yell bad, bad women, oh, off, get out of my get out of my comments. I don't care. <laughs> get enough. off my yard. <laughs> <laughs>